uh, we won't manage. Spanish TV, uh, a new face this year, Arturo Paniagua, uh, who's a journalist, radio and TV presenter, currently working in uh, RTVE.S. Audiovisual Innovation Lab, discovering new narratives for information and entertainment. After more than 10 years of experience on online media, digital strategy, Dennis conceived daily life without the help of technology, and today he will speak of the last findings of the lab and what they're doing in Torre España in Madrid. In any case, as Arnau said, I am part of a wonderful team called Laboratorio de uh, Innovación Audiovisual, Audiovisual Innovation Lab. Many people still don't know us, uh, and many people have known us for some time. I hope you are uh, of this last group. You can see our work in this website, lab. RTV.es, as Arnaud said, our aim is to try to find new narratives with which to tell stories. Stories we all know, interesting stories, micro stories, but we do want to tell every project in a different way. We do web docs, we do interactives, we do data journalism, we're also analyzing how the uh, viral contents travel the web. And one day we uh, came across a wonderful challenge to set up a, a dramatic story through a narrative that we had never worked on doing journalism and information through a video game. That started the controversy. Is it possible to uh, not think any longer that video games are pure entertainment in creating a video game that is informative and that has to do with the news? That was the first approach we had. And in fact, this is a book published in 2010 which is the one that best deals with this uh, topic, uh, docu games and news games. And the authors say it clearly. It's a good way of simulating reality. And it's a good alternative to tell things in a different way, different from how they are told in the media. Also, uh, the video game should not just be uh, something to attract a user in the end, it should contribute with something um, so that the user could draw these or her own conclusions. In our case, the topic was very delicate, but uh, don't think that we are super experts in the matter. Since 2001, we, there have been news games, docu games, some of them very interesting. Some of the few, the first two most known was Kabul Kaboom, where the user has to pick up those humanitarian aid packages that fall from the airplanes as you uh, escape from the bombs that the kind US Army was uh, launching, was um, throwing on the city of Kabul. And then there was another one con. Uh, September the 12th, where you were taken to a place in which there were terrorist threats and you could launch missiles towards the terrorists. But in along the way, there was uh, collateral damage and the innocent victims would die and those around them became terrorists. So as you were playing, everyone became a terrorist and attacked you. And the only way to do this right was not to play at all. That takes us to a very critical conclusion. How is our game born, Montelab? This is the current team. You see a black guy, that's myself. And these people on the ends are our colleagues from Documentos TV in Barcelona. They came with their project. They told us from the very beginning 
as soon as we asked them to prepare this documentary, they told us and they had uh, the concern that their linear should be accompanied by something interactive. Uh, we still didn't know exactly how to go about that. Then we had another conversation and they told us the drama that many people were experiencing. People who suffered from the uh, real estate uh, bubble burst. In, we heard in the news today in Madrid and Barcelona there are 40 homes uh, being evicted every day. Uh, one of the uh, results of the real estate crisis and people who bought a house as it was halfway being built uh, in an area that was not completely developed and they end up getting their house and they live in a place that is not developed. There is no uh, neighborhood, no uh, public transportation, nothing. They live in a dead neighborhood, in an unfinished neighborhood, and people just live trapped in those areas. Uh, so we have uh, casas vacías y nuevas ruinas, empty houses and new ruins. Uh, they suggested working on this, and we said, what should we do? And we saw several problems in this story. The consequences of the real estate bubble in Spain to 106,000 results if you google it between uh, news and analyses and with so many stories having seen it so many times you hear it in the news and it's not an impact anymore because we've been bombarded by it so very many times so our solution was that people should put themselves in the shoes of all of those people who were suffering so much because they made one wrong decision. They bought that house or that apartment. And we reached the conclusion that uh, games can be part of public debate. I'm going to show you the video of Montelab to show you what this game is about and then I'll show you a couple more details regarding its development. En lo que llega el video, pues um, también um, nos interesaba hacer el videojuego porque We also wanted to do the video game because it was a way of uh, reaching a broader uh, audience, audience that we wouldn't reach on a, a regular basis. Although we have very many topics in the lab today, we could be working on Eurovision and tomorrow on the uh, victims of the real estate bubble burst. But um, we had, if we have to think of it in terms of a video game, we would reach an audience, a target audience that we would have never reached before. How did we do it? We had to invent a character. Uh, we had a hundred problems along the way. Where would he live, married or single, with children or without? In the end, we imagined a person, but we tried to adapt each of the elements to reality, and we tried to do it through a fiction explaining something that is really a true, uh, true journalism, and that's how we uh, created a game through a, an experience, in this case, a complicated experience. Y ahí lo tenemos. Los juegos pueden te and here we have it. Games can inform and they can create awareness. And now you'll see Montelab and how it works and how you play with it. Bienvenido a Montelab, el docu-game que descubre la aventura que fue para muchos comprar una vivienda justo antes del estallido de la burbuja inmobiliaria. Lo primero que debes hacer es elegir el tipo de familia que encaja más contigo. Puedes alquilar, aunque tu entorno no para de presionarte para que te lances a la compra. ¡Compre! 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 Muchas de las tareas de tu día a día serán una auténtica agonía en Montelab. Comprar el pan, acudir al médico o tirar la basura no será tan sencillo en tu nueva vivienda virtual y según las decisiones que tomes, tu calidad de vida y tus ahorros se verán afectados. No le quites el ojo a los marcadores superiores para saber el valor que tiene año a año tu vivienda. 
En paralelo te presentaremos la historia de David, un aragonés que ha sufrido los inconvenientes de vivir en una urbanización fallida, sin servicios. No tenemos servicios ni de correo ni de un medio de transporte que sea fuera de nuestro propio de tu coche ni pasa autobús. También conocerás a Alicia y Rosa, dos mujeres que hicieron frente a un desahucio en terraza. Y escucharás a expertos en urbanismo y economía para entender las consecuencias de este modelo inmobiliario que ha complicado la vida a cientos de familias. Disfruta tu aventura en Montelab y comparte el resultado con tus amigos en las redes sociales. Así es Montelab. That's Montelab. We managed to set up a game that was very real. As you see, there are markers that determines the expenses you have as you take your decisions along the game. There's another marker with the price of your uh, property and how it falls uh, at any moment you, dis you can decide to sell and that will give you results. As you move on along the game and you take decisions, you see, always see uh, comments and interviews of someone who has suffered from that. Uh, someone who, a video gamer who has played that in the game, or an expert that will tell you if you took the right decision or if you screwed up. We detected the stories that were ahead of us, choosing a school, not having the internet, all based on the experiences we had been told by the protagonists. The most complicated thing was the design, uh, taking the importance of the story and turning it and use that story to create the rules of the game to uh, give shape to the markers and we also wanted to have uh, to make very clear it had to be a simple game to reach the uh, largest amount of audience possible it's uh, journalism but you play and we didn't want it to distract Uh, the user at all times we wanted um, the um, user to be aware of the news we were creating we wanted a navigation tree this was the first part to do a tree with all the decisions taken in the game what results were taken the, the results derived from those decisions we created a questionnaire to adapt every decision to the content we had We had our own uh, material from Documentos TV and we also had, we also did our own interviews and research to complement a little more what our colleagues from Documentos TV had done previously. And as I said, every decision you take in the game has a consequence which is pondered according to real data from the year in which you took your decision. We went out filming because uh, some stories had not been told and uh, the idea was that the people uh, affected by the bubble burst should tell you the story that should get you involved in the story. After setting everything, then we had to sell it which is uh, frivolous, but it's true. We want people to consume our products, and it went well in social media and social networks, especially because you could share the results you got with many people who were angry because at the beginning the game allows you to buy or rent. You uh, rent, you press rent, and your mother comes out and says, no, that's throwing out your money. Then uh, your brother-in-law, too, and someone else. And so they all insist that you buy. And then it's a battle for survival and seeing how far you can go in the game. Results. In the first week, we had 32,709 unique users. I know it's not an amazing figure, but the second one I do like. The average visit time was of seven minutes. Montelab, according to the decision you take, can be consumed in 15, 20, 25 minutes if you really get into it and you enjoy it. And 66% 
of the people who played in Montela finished the whole video. I mean, they saw all the audiovisual material uh, and we got feedback regarding uh, Montela. It's a game that follows the rules of the game. Some people said uh, it was a little simple or simplistic for adult users. Uh, too much austerity, said others. And we learned to just follow the rules of the game and uh, to be immersive. In the end, as we heard in the morning, we are a lab where we like to move quickly and we like to break things and it's okay if you make mistakes. You also learn very much making mistakes. We also had discordant uh, factors, very much criticism, particularly regarding the uh, favorable trivialization, uh, but not we're not being trivial about it. We want to deal with a with a serious problem, and when we want to people to know what it is like for these people who who are suffering this because they made one wrong mistake. Citizens are uh, consumers as well, and uh, we wanted to reflect real things, things reflecting life. And itself, this constant mantra we had when we were working on the project is this, this is journalism, we are telling a story, and we believed that the uh, player should finish drawing their own conclusion about this. Now, the conclusions, docu-games. It must be accessible. They must be played in a web browser. They shouldn't be uh, containing determined uh, political interests. And if possible, they should refer to a specific news in a specific period of time. The docu-game should live at the same time as the news you are telling. And that's it. Here we are at Twitter. And uh, that's it on my behalf. Thank you.